the first question that we had said that in the story of Naaman the Syrian in Second Kings, Gehazi ended up with leprosy, which was supposed to last forever on him and his descendants. Did he at any point get healed of this? Because three chapters later, he was standing before the king, telling him of Elisha's miraculous deeds. Aren't Israelites meant to isolate when they have infectious diseases? Did he at any point repent and get healed? So that was the, that was the first question, Pastor. Okay, so we should, let's tackle that one first. Uh, let's tackle that one first. Okay, uh, that's, that's a really very good question. Um, for those of you who are not aware, the, the story is in Second Kings. Um, it, um, and I think in chapter five, I think it is, let's see. Yes, chapter five is when Naaman uh, is healed of leprosy, and then um, the Naaman offered the prophet uh, a, re a reward, almost like a payment, and the prophet refused, in spite of Naaman's insistence. The prophet refused it, and. Uh, then Naaman left with his entourage, and then uh, Gehazi uh, followed followed him to 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 uh, and uh, <laughs> there's a phrase he uses. He said, uh, "My master sped." <laughs> oh Lord, he's the, mm. so that, let, let me see if I can find that his phrase. Uh, verse 20, 2 Kings 5.20. Uh, it, it says, um, Gehozi, Gehozi, his father, I can't pronounce, but uh, he said um, in verse 20, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God said, Behold, my master hath spared Naaman, this Syrian, in not receiving at his hand that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Uh, that's, that's, you see, not only was he greedy, he was actually even doing it in the name of the Lord. He swore that as the Lord lives, which is a very, very strong statement that people make when they are trying to uh, uh, proclaim the faithfulness of God or something, you know, or the the, the inerrancy of God's word. Uh, and he's using it to, to, to justify his greed. Um, but anyway, that's, that's another story. And um, so he went and he collected something from him. Uh, and when he came back, so let, let, let's see when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them, that's verse 24, in his house. And he let the men go and he, they departed. But he went in and stood before his master. So he took the stuff, hid it away in his own house, and then went back to his master. And Elijah said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, The servant went no whither. Now, that was a, a chance that God was giving him to repent. A lot of times when God asks us questions, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. It's because he's giving you an opportunity. Where is your brother? Abel. Is he, is he, God asked Cain, said, where is your brother Abel? And, and it wasn't because he didn't know. When Adam sinned, said, what is this thing you have done, Adam? So God always asks that question to help people to come to the place of repentance. So next time God asks you a question, don't be quick to answer. Just think about it and uh, do a quick repentance if it's something that you have done wrong or if God is trying to call your attention to something. Anyhow, um, he said, I, went, I didn't go anywhere. 
and then verse 26, and he said unto him, went not mine heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? So in other words, I, was, I saw everything in the spirit. I saw it all. Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? Uh, then verse 27, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper white as snow. So um, yes, when in chapter eight, we see um, we, we see that El Elisha asked the woman uh, whose son he had restored to life to, to, to leave Israel because there was going to be a famine for seven years. So the woman went to uh, the land of the Philistines and she was there for seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years end, at the end of that, that the woman returned. And she, now, when she returned, obviously because she had left, she, she had lost her property. She had lost the rights to the property because she had left. But she went to cry to the king because it was the man of God. It was God that told her to leave. So that, that's why she went to cry to the king. And uh, it's very interesting that at the material moment that she, she comes, it's the time that uh, the, 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 the king was talking to Gehazi as, 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 as the, uh, about the exploits of Eli, Elisha. So um, there's always this element of divine um, timing and how God works everything together for our good, even when we don't know that he's working. Um, all right. So now to, to come to the question, to come to the question. Um, there are, it, 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 there are three possible uh, explanations. Um, they're not, we, we, we don't really know, but there are three possible explanations. The first one is that this incident happened before Naaman's uh, leprosy issue, before Naaman came uh, and Eli, Eli, Gehazi was still um, uh, it was still the servant of Elisha at this point. That's that's one uh, one uh, one explanation that some uh, Bible scholars give. Uh, but it it I, 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 it doesn't seem to hold water because I I mean it could be, but it doesn't seem to be uh, because um, if you look at the chronology, it doesn't seem to make sense. But that's so, so that's one possibility. The second possibility is that um, he, he, he actually was already a leper, which is what I, I that's what the, what the, that's the option I would tend to go with. And that um, this, the king was so curious. He really did want to know so much about the prophet that he sent for Gehazi, even though he was a, a, a leper. All right. Now, in terms of the uh, issue of isolation, I don't think it is total isolation because the lepers would, even though they were restricted to a particular area, they, they would come out to eat, to buy food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But what did there was social distancing and so they had to if you notice those 10 lepers when they they came out they were allowed to come out they they they, they, they didn't break the law by coming out but they had to be they had to keep their distance they had to maintain a distance uh, social distancing and they had to cry unclean unclean so that people would not so it, it was the, the infection did not take place, at least from the understanding of the people then, 
Infection didn't take place unless there was close contact with the people. So um, that's, uh, that's one thing. So it is very, it is more than likely that when the king sent for him, and even though he, he was a leper, that all distancing, any, any, when, when you are talking with the king anyway, you are not going to be in that close proximity with the king. You stand, the king sits on the throne, you, stay, you sit a distance away from the king. There are people between you and the king, and yes, so you are not going to, you are not going to get that kind of uh, proximity to the king anyway, even if you were not a leper, let alone if you were. So it is quite likely that um, the king wanted to know, and even though he was a leper, the king made sure that all the protocols were observed, he was kept at a distance and all that. Um, so that's, that's one, that's a, that's a second possibility. The third one, which is probably the most likely outcome is that this, this, this uh, meeting took place outside, which, which makes isolation even easier. Uh, you know that the kings, when they, they met with, the, the, there was the city gates, uh, uh, the place where they sat and they did judgment and heard people's cases. They didn't hear the cases in the palace. They heard it in the city gates. So it is quite possible that this was outside um, by the city gates and the king was sitting there and he invited. So it was in an open space. So again, that makes uh, isolation and um, distancing um, more, 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 more uh, feasible, possible, possible. So uh, that that so I, I I believe that yes, he was still a leper, and um, in fact, his leprosy would even have been again a, a testimony which the king would have wanted to hear because the king would have said, okay, he worked with him. And this guy did something, so he was disgraced, and the, the, the man of God cursed him, and he got he got leprosy. So is he still leprous? He is. Uh, really? Okay, let me see him. So the king, he would come to the king, and the king would see that he's actually leprous. So that lent credence to all the stories that the king had been hearing about Elisha. So I think um, the king was definitely curious. He wanted to know. He was he he, he wanted to he he, 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 he wanted to corroborate the stories that he had heard. So uh, I think, and Elisha being, uh, Eli, Eli, uh, uh, Gehozi being Elisha's former PA in a sense, would have the inside information. And that was exactly what the king wanted. He didn't want secondhand stories. He wanted stories from somebody who had actually been with Eli, Eli, El, Elisha. All right, so um, yeah, so again, the isolation was not, it wasn't total isolation, it was just separation, distance, keep the distance, maintain it, and all that. And in this case, being the king and they, him being leprous, that the, the, the protocols would have been observed. So, so it is quite possible that he's, he, was, he, he was indeed a leper and the king sent for him because the king was so curious he wanted to know so that's that's my own uh, understanding of it if anybody else has anything they want to add please feel free to go ahead now before we go into the second the second uh, question yeah pastor i just i just did a quick research as well of this leprosy thing so in addition i think there's another possibility that i just i'm just seeing now yeah, yeah. The prophecy thing, and interestingly, this um, this verse in Leviticus came up, Leviticus thirteen, Ooh. um, from verse twelve, really, and and then I went back to the story to read the story again, and then came back here. So this in Leviticus thirteen, it says, verse twelve, it says, if a, if a lepr and if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin. And the leprosy cover all the skin of him that have the plague from his head, even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh. Then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, 
he shall pronounce him clean that have the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. And then in verse 17, it says, and the priest shall see him and behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. And I was just looking at the story in the, the story of um, in, in 2 Kings chapter 5, there it says that Naaman went out from before Elisha um, with leprosy, white as snow. So I was wondering whether this type of leprosy was one that really, um, so it was, still, it was leprosy, but it was one that didn't require um, quarantine or separation, as you, as you alluded to earlier. That's the Syrian variant. <laughs> and yes, yeah, yeah, Tunji, yeah. you are actually you are actually very correct because one of the things I wanted to say is mm. that is that the the in fact and and even though Jenna was joking, the, the Syrian variant that you see one of the things I wanted to observe. Thank you for that, Tunji. Is that Naaman, even though he was leprous, was still going about his duties and still standing before the king of Samaria. And, and he still came out. So uh, you, you, yeah, it, yeah, you, yeah. you are right that it may be that var variant that, that doesn't require that degree of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of uh, isolation or um, that, that level of distance, it may be. Yeah. So that, that's, that's another option. Thanks for that. That's because, and then, why, why that is significant is because Elisha said, the leprosy of Naaman is going yeah. to be upon you. So the same one, the same kind that yeah. was on him, mm. which means that he could go out and he could relate with other people yeah. uh, and then all that. So that, thanks for that. Thanks. That, that's a, that's, a, an, an, a, that's a possibility too. Thanks. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. All right, good, thank you. So uh, we, we can, let's go to the next question. So Tim, read, read it for us. Okay. And then we'll... The, the second question says, and why did Elisha, a whole Elisha, die of sickness. <laughs> <A> holy <Elisha. laughs> Why did he die of sickness? Does this point to Christ who, even though had the power to heal, bore our sicknesses and diseases? Elisha did perform similar miracles to Christ. So maybe he had to die like Christ in a sense? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay. That's a very good question again, again too. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> there, there are still, there's still some stuff that even though we, we are in the New Testament and we are the church and we have the Holy Spirit inside, there's still some stuff that we don't fully understand. Uh, we still don't understand why some people get healed and some don't. We still don't understand when, why, when we pray sometimes, some it happens, some, some happen miraculously immediately, some happen uh, over a process and some don't seem to happen, you know? There's, so there's still quite a lot of stuff that I think we know, uh, the Bible says we know in part. <laughs> we, so we still only know in part and we are growing and trying to come up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Um, but let me let, 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 let me throw a spanner in the works before uh, I, I, I sort of try to answer the question. Um, I, and I think the person who asked the question uh, helped us to see some a possibility that if it, that the reason why Elisha would pro, one of the reasons why Elisha would die of sickness is probably because he's a type of Christ and he had to bear sicknesses in, in, in himself as a, a, a type in type okay so that that's 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 one one option that's one possibility because you know that Elijah was 
uh, a type of the Old Testament or Moses, the Mosaic, and Elisha was Christ. So you could see that in terms of their miracles, in terms of how they operated, there was that uh, there was that dynamic of the Old and the New Testament, the law and uh, grace of Moses and Christ. You know, there's that there's that dynamic. So yes, um, that's that's also quite that's interesting to note. But um, now let me let let me call your attention to something. Um, even though now Paul was the writer of a good a good portion of the New Testament, and um, we know that he actually died. Uh, he was he was executed. A history church history tells us that, um, uh, and he, he in the in his book he told us that the time of his offering up was coming. So he knew he was going to to be put to death. He he was aware of that. Um, we are told again church history tells us and Peter hints uh, and the Bible tells us that. Uh, John, uh, James, James, the brother of, of John, the, the one of the two sons of thunder was 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 executed very early in the life of the church. Uh, Peter were, w w w said that I, I I know that very soon my my, my time to, to be taken away will be, and we we discover that he was actually crucified upside down by church, church history tells us that. So 11 of the 12 apostles, uh, uh, or, or 10 or 11 of them died by, uh, were, were killed, you know, really. So it's, uh, so the question is a whole, all these disciples, how come they are being killed, you know? Um, then let's go to Paul. Let's go to Paul. Um, um, Second Corinthians 11, verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often, of the Jews five times received I 40 stripes save one, that's 39 stripes. Thrice was I beaten with rods, that's 2 Corinthians 11, 25. Once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I've been in the deep. Verse 26, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Uh, Right, so we can see that a whole Paul, uh, a whole Paul suffered all these things. And uh, if you remember, this is Paul that would raise Dorcas from the dead, raise that young man that fell from the window, uh, from the dead and everything. But then he tells us that um, uh, somebody remind me. He said one of his uh, uh, um, helpers was sick, nigh unto death. Can you can you help me, please? If you uh, Philippians two twenty seven. Yeah. Yes, Philippians two. Um, 
Let's take it from verse 25. Yet I suppose it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that you had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So a whole Paul's helper, a whole Paul that, you know, he's that raised the dead and did that. How come that he could not heal Epaphroditus? And he, Epaphroditus was so sick, so sick, so, so, it was close to death that Paul himself, and it was Paul had given up in a sense. He had almost given up. He said <laughs> he was now to death, and God had mercy on him and on me because uh, he didn't want me to have sorrow upon sorrow. So, um, so can I can I can I even throw a bit more mix into that? Yes, please, please. Even Paul himself was sick. Was, I, I, I was even I'm going to come to that. <laughs> Paul himself, please give, give me the scripture, please. Let, let's let's yeah, look well, at in, it. In Galatians chapter 4, mm. uh, verses 13 and 14, uh, we see him mentioning that. Um, yes. Read more contemporary versions, it actually makes it quite clear. Um, so I, if I read the King, King James Version first, and then we read, read in a couple of other translations, it says, you know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh, you despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as of Christ Jesus. But if you read um, E.R. River, for instance, it says, you know that I came to you the first time because I was sick. That was when I told the good news to you. My sickness was a burden to you, but you did not stop showing me respect or make me leave. Um, ESV says, because of bodily ailments that I preach, um, you know, it was because of bodily ailments that I preached the gospel to you at the first. And though my condition was a trial to you, you did not scorn or despise me. So even this tells me that it looks like it was something that was, that needed a lot of caring. Care and attention, yes. Attention, and they didn't, you know, they didn't scorn him. And they didn't say, physician, heal thyself. Yeah, heal thyself. And he was, and, and all this time, he was, he was, God was using him to heal other people and to, you know, perform certain miracles. I mean, and with some people and then some others, he couldn't do anything about them. I think, yeah, I think, I think I lean towards what you said earlier about, you know, there are a lot of things that we don't fully understand um, at the moment. But yeah, yeah, I just wanted yeah. to point that out as well. No, not me either. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Anybody else have anything to add to this? I think. <laughs> So when we say a whole Paul, <laughs> a whole Jesus was crucified. <laughs> Jesus was crucified, you know. So, uh, Pastor, can I, I add another one to this? Yes. So, several years ago, um, I heard a, a, a man of God, uh, and this doesn't mean that not, this doesn't mean that they're not a man of God or anything, because we're all humans and we make mistakes or kind of thing. But I heard this man of God say um, something to the effect that um, um, to die young before 70 really is not fulfilling God's will. And I, and, and I thought to myself, well, well in that case, then our Jesus, Lord, didn't, our Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus himself did not fulfill God's did will. Did not fulfill God's will, yes. But, but I, I just, you know, I, I think sometimes we just have to be careful that, you know, we, we don't make certain... Um, statements yes we yeah. i think we get emotionally carried away and start to say things that the and bible I get, doesn't I say get, i get what they were trying to say they were trying to say to encourage us to look hold on to god for long life and believe long life yes but you know yeah we, i think we can say that without not without with us without making statements that are not true mm. yeah 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 it, it's 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 pretty much like saying uh if you are if you don't have money you are outside of God's will, you know. That's that, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people who are preaching that. That uh, yeah. 
it's because I, I'm in God's will. That's why I'm rich. And if you are, if you don't have money or you are not rich, then you are not in God. Which is it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, the Bible says that we 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 should be careful of that kind of teaching. Who, people who tell who, who mistake uh, wealth for for for, for uh, who, who mistake um, um, monetary wealth for for godliness. He said you should you should actually turn from such people yes yes yes, yes. so we, we i think it's the same it, it's the same principle mm. that mm. we just have to be careful about uh, what you know just knowing that there are just there are some things that we don't fully understand there are some mm. things that you know and then there are there are factors that sometimes we're not exposed to mm. Mm. Um, uh, l- l- let me share one 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 that happened to us personally you know um there was one we had a a, a daughter a spiritual daughter she had been quite unwell for a long time and the doctors couldn't they couldn't determine what was wrong with her so she was she had been going through all kinds of operations and procedures and you know and i remember one one day momio and i were at home and the holy spirit just sort of laid on our hearts that we should go and see her so momio got the word i got the word so and there was a sense of urgency so we 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 set off and we went to see her at home so when we got when we got to her house, she was in a very bad state. She was, she was quite, she was quite unwell. But worse than that, she was mentally, um, she she was she was tired. She was just tired of the whole thing. So when we got there, we we encouraged her, and then we prayed for her. And one of the things that God said, we should rebuke the spirit of death. So we got there and we rebuked the spirit of death. Then we encouraged her, and then. We prayed with her and everything. And she told us something which was, which, uh, you know, was very, very interesting. She said, thank God you people came today. She said, because I had made up my mind that I had had enough. I had made up my mind that I couldn't take any more and that I didn't need to take any more. That if I die, I'm going to go to heaven. And so there was no, there's no point. So I, I, I just, and the doctors just didn't know what to do and I, I was just tired of it. So I just, I, I had given up. And that, so our coming was now the new lease of life. So, uh, and that she was now ready to battle again. Interestingly, she went to the hospital the next day. Um, she went to the hospital the next day and the doctors now found out what was wrong with her. The next day, and then they started to treat her, and then she got better. And praise God, she's she's well now. So, you see, she was on the verge. So, if if we had not obeyed the spirit of God, um, she would have given up. She would have died. Because that's all you need. Once you say, "I don't want to live anymore," that's it. There's nothing more. That's it. No, no, no amount of uh, anything that anybody does will, will work. It's, it's amazing how once you, once you say, I don't want to live anymore, not, there's not, nothing anybody can do about it. So she would have died. Now, every Christian would have been upset with God because he would say, uh, why? She's a young person. God, why didn't you heal her? What is the problem? Um, and all that. Now, again, note, if we had been disobedient or we had or that we say other things were more important at that point. We would have gone two days later only to discover that she died two days, the day, the day, the day God told us to do what, you know what I mean? So sometimes again, uh, so there are, other, there are a lot of factors that we are not aware of. <laughs> so we, when we are making value judgments, sometimes we're not aware, we don't have all the information. Um, so, um, that that that's that's a personal one that we we know you know that yes 
So sometimes, if anything had happened, people would be wondering, her family would be upset, everybody would be wondering, uh, why God, why didn't you uh, heal her? What is, is it that you don't heal anymore? Or, and so that's one possibility. Now, that, that doesn't mean that that's the possibility, that's the case with every situation, but that's just one issue. So that's why I said, there's just so much we don't know. So much we don't know. We just have to trust God and everything. All right. So, yeah. So I, I hope that that, I hope that that answers so. Uh, uh, and Pastor, uh, just just to add that I think, and I think you've you've mentioned this, you've told us this before in the past, that the fact that, um, and I think we we all we, a lot of us on the call would know will know this, the fact that you know you pray for someone and you trust God for the healing, and it seems that they still went home to be with the Lord without being healed, it does not mean that the next time somebody is ill. It's ill that you shouldn't pray. Mm. I won't know. Well, I don't know what God is really, so I won't pray. No, we still pray and we still believe Him for the healing because healing is our portion and healing is what Christ has wrote for us. So, yeah, we keep that um, mentality. Same, same thing with long life, same thing with um, prospering, same thing with prosperity. Yes, so we, uh, just, to, just to keep claiming that finished work for Christ. Yeah. yeah, because the minute you give up on it without faith, it's impossible to please God. We are be, like we are praying for some governments, like the government in Nigeria, we've been praying, 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 praying. You know, there's a tendency to say, ah, nothing is happening, look, let's, let's leave this matter. <laughs> you know, or some other issue like that, you know, some uh, stubborn, recalcitrant issue that refuses to, that doesn't seem to want to go, you know. Uh, but uh, you find that when God moves, he moves quite quickly. <laughs> so let's, uh, let, let's just keep at it. And let's not, uh... now, also, please, I want us to note something. Uh, when I was looking at the story of Naaman, that, can we go back there? It, I, was, I was asking myself, why did God not let Elisha take something from him? Why, why, what, what, what? because sometimes God, does, God, God doesn't have a problem with people rewarding you sometimes, you know, it doesn't, sometimes he actually, forces people to reward you when they, you know, sometimes he takes from them and gives it to you. So I was wondering why, why, why this, why? And it was, when I looked at the story, I saw something that really sort of, it gave me an indication. It didn't answer all the questions, but it gave an indication. Um, it gave me an indication. Okay, so let's, let's go to the second Kings 5.1. Now, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria was a great man. You see, that's, that's the first thing we are told about him. So that's his first problem. That's his first problem. He's a, he was a great man. Everybody saw him as a great man. <laughs> you see, and when everybody keeps telling you you are a great man, after a while, you too, you, you believe you are a great man. And I, there's no, I'm not quarreling with whether he was a great man or not. I, I'm just saying, let's observe what the Bible notes, the, the points that the Bible notes, and why, you see, God doesn't note those things for a reason, uh, for, without a reason, okay? So he was a great man with his master, and he was honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor. So this was, this was, this wasn't a, a mean man. This was, this was a man, a man of high repute by any standard by any standard but he was a leper okay um, so um, so now verse 2 and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. That, now, that's, that's what you call faith. <laughs> that's faith. She, she was unequivocal about it. She, mm. And that's very dangerous because she's a maid. She's a slave. Mm. She was taken as a slave. And if that kind of confidence does not bear fruit, <laughs> you could very easily lose your head. <laughs> you, 
Now, who do you think you were deceiving? You know, so it, it's a very, it was a very dangerous thing. But that that she was very confident in her Lord. So one went in and told his Lord, saying, "Thus and thus." Sorry, sorry. 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 Yeah. Before you move on, I know we're not talking about the little maid, but something about this story of this little maid kind of amazes me because yeah. you know she she had been ripped away from her family, separated as a yeah. child from everything that good that she knew. And she was yeah. now in the place of servitude. So yeah. all would have thought that this would have been a good place where we should have thought, ah, God catch you. you God know, catch you. God, eh? God, you God don't punish you. God well, punish well. And everything. But in, in her mind, there was still this, this, this love of God, this kindness, God. compassion, this, this, this compassion that would make her to exclaim and proclaim her God to this yeah. This, this man who is he then responsible people. for the state, you know, kind of, yeah, just you know, something and, and to, to, to try to secure God's mercy yeah. on his behalf because yeah. she was yeah. confident. She said, If yeah. if you go to my uh, to my to the prophet, he will do it. God, my God will do it. So, yeah. so you know, it was you, you are right. There's there's yeah. something very awesome about her, yes, something really, really awesome about her. Uh, and, and one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king, now watch what happens next. Watch what happens. The king of Syria said, Go to, go. I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him. So you see, what happened was now this is diplomatic protocol at the highest level. So the girl said, My God will do it. The prophet will, my God will do it through the prophet. The kings already, they took it to protocol level where it's kings talking to kings, you know? So um, the king says to Naaman, you are my person. You are my personal person. So I'm going to talk to my contemporary king in I'm Israel. I'm going to sort you out. Yeah, I'm going to sort you out, you know? So king to king. And then it, when they were going, watch what happens. The Bible says he departed, he took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, 10 changes. So he's going to buy. In his mind, he's going to pay for his, mm. his healing. His healing. Mm. That was why, that was the main reason why God didn't want any angel. Because he would have said, well, at least I brought money, I brought everything, and you, you took the talent. So it, when, when the story is being told, he will say, um, it was... It, it, it cost me how much again again? 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, 10 changes of raiment was how my leprosy was, was healed. So it was very, very important that there, there will be a separate, your money perish with you, there was, that there will be a separation. God mm -hmm. wanted it to be clear that this had nothing, it had to do with the fate of a little mate, it had mm -hmm. absolutely nothing to do with money. I had nothing to do with the protocols of kings talking to kings. So you will see, I, I will show you what I'm talking about again. Let's, let, let's move on. He says, and he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. So they are talking as if he's the king that is going to do the work. <laughs> you know? And now, when the king of Syria now sent to the king of Israel. He said, listen to what the king said. The king of Israel said, when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, am I God? This is only something that only God can do. So the king was aware that this, this thing you are doing, it's not, it has, it, whatever you are doing, it has nothing to do with me. How, and even how can you expect me to heal? Why are you coming to me? You are looking for trouble. So he said, you see, can I, uh, will, this man does send unto me to recover a man of leprosy. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. He's looking for trouble. He's looking for my trouble. So that if I say I can't heal him, then he will not attack me. That, that's the whole, it, it was, so that you can see what's going on there. That there's a, a, a subplot going on. And it came to pass when the king of Israel read the letter that he rent his clothes, okay? And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, okay, that he sent to the king saying, why are you tear your clothes? Why? Why are you renting your clothes? Let him come now to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. 
let him come. Hallelujah. Because the girl didn't say go to the king. The girl said go to the prophet and that God would use that prophet to do it. So the prophet too had, his, had confidence in his God and what God would do through him. Okay. What, but watch this. It's, it's still, the story is still unfolding. Verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house. So he came with fanfare. <laughs> so again, go back to verse 1. The mighty honorable man. So a man of, you know, so he came. He said, look, I'm not, a, I'm not an ordinary man. I, I, I deserve this, I, you know. So he came with fanfare. I mean, you're coming to a prophet's house. Why are you carrying chariots? Horses and chariots. Horses and chariots. Why? You know, horses and chariots are for warfare. And after the warfare, when you do the victory, you, know, you don't use horses and chariots to go mm. to hospital. It's a show of strength and might. It was a show of strength and might. It was a show of strength and might. It was. It was. It was a display of <laughs> all that. All the and so horse chariot. Then six thousand pieces of silver. Mm. Imagine how that. What you know, ten thousand talents of gold. Of, of, of six thousand uh, gold, ten thousand of, of silver, and changes of raiment. Mm. So you can imagine the entourage. It was. It was very. It was very impressive. Um, you know, entourage. Now, so watch this. And that was why Elisha did what he did. And that's why God told Elisha, don't take money. Mm. So Elisha sent a messenger unto him. Elisha didn't even come out. He didn't have the dignity the, 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 to, to honor him and say, ah, you know, if it's like us, oh, ah, king, <laughs> hey, oh, God, God bless you. <laughs> Uh, your humble pastor is here. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, no. Elisha just sent a word to him, sent a messenger. He, did, he didn't even come out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and your flesh will come again today and you'll be clean. You see, and again, God purposely did that to humble the man. Mm. And yeah. so that the man will recognize that it is not by power or by mind. Mm -hmm. It's not by your money. It's not by your... Uh, You've had all this, or you had all this when you came from Syria. Why didn't you get healed? You couldn't get healed there. You so it, it it's it is not by your power, it's not by your position, it is just the grace. It's the is that mate. I'm honoring that mate. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm honoring the faith of that mate. Mm. Yeah. So wow. verse 11, Naaman was rough, he was so angry and went away and said, I you see, now look at what he, he said, behold. I thought he will surely come out to me. He would stand, call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand all over the place. <laughs> you know, strike Pastor. his hand over the place and recover the leper. He, you know, he was expecting that, okay, with the fanfare that I have come, mm -hmm. the man of God will come out too and mm -hmm. say, Hail, thou general, the Lord is with thee. And because thou hast done all these wondrous things. And then he would strike his hand all over the place <laughs> and do some <laughs> dramatic gestures. Mm. That's not, for, for a man with leprosy, he was really proud though. I mean. <laughs> he had every reason to be proud. He had every, did you see what his story is? In? The captain of the host, a great man, an honorable man, a wealthy man. A number two man in the government. Ah, Pastor, course. I think there was one thing that one thing that was very instructive in the first or second verse where the Bible says that God gave them victory through De him. Deliverance through so him. So it was yes. actually God that gave Israel's enemies the victory. Yeah. It was, it was a, God that, that gave him that victory. Favor that of God. One was looking at him as a great man. And yeah. he missed that part of it. He didn't yeah. know. Me. He thought mm. he didn't you know he was all that. He didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> and Pastor, it's, it's very interesting that <laughs> God gives our enemies, in quotes, like people that are not his people. In that sense, God also gives them victory. Yeah. Like, 
we will expect that they are doomed, always doomed. But in in God's great scheme of things, when He's working yeah. His plans, yeah. sometimes you know, at, yeah. like it's amazing. You are, you are so correct. You are so so correct. You are so correct. Then look at verse twelve. He said, "Are not Abana and Fapa rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel?" So nationalism. You see now, he's now like. We have, I mean, our rivers are better than the rivers of Israel. We are better than Israel. Israelites. So what, what, why? I mean, if God wants to do anything, so you can see that pride again. You can see the pride at work there. Uh, he said, I, 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 may I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near. I'm sure that girl must have probably been one of those who said what to him again. They came near and spoke unto him and said, my father, if the prophet had we do do some great thing. Would you not have done it? How much rather than when he said to you, wash and be clean. You see, sometimes we think God has to do it in a dramatic way. Mm. Ah. And if God doesn't do it in dramatic way, we, we feel disappointed because we like the drama. And you see, we feel that the drama shows that we are approved. Mm. <laughs> the drama shows that we are approved. You see, when God blows the trumpet, para, para, eh, eh, this is what I'm saying. Everybody heard it when God blew the trumpet. Mm. What are you talking? Pastor, oh, it's a man of God. You know? <laughs> but if you think what happened all quietly like that, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, God. No, 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 no. Let, let's make noise. Let's make some noise. Let, yes, Pastor, let's... how can I brag now? If it's just going How washing, can I brag if it's so quiet? If it's just going to wash in a pool. You know, I need, I need fire. No. I need fire, the God that answered <laughs> by thunder and fire. <laughs> so he says, uh, how much more he says to you, what shall be clean? Thank God for wise servants. Thank God for wise servants who, you know, they, 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 they say, oh God, if he told you to do something dramatic, you do it. Now he tell you to do something not, not dramatic. It is your own this thing. And so he went, dipped himself seven times according to the... So... Um, Pastor, I, I think there's something very instructive about that that thing about him that servant's advice to Nehemiah, where he yes. says to him um how much more if you just told you to go and wash and clean because even with us sometimes i remember yeah. like when, when we were um years ago in my christian work remember how that you know when when we're in church or something we, we want to involve the children but well, let's say we ask the children to pray for instance at the beginning yeah. of the school or in the middle um and they call my child comes and prays and and no matter how good the prayer is, we, we, we always have to call a, an adult or a pastor or something to then pray the proper prayer, as if the mm. child's prayer. But prayer was, was rubbish. Mm. Sometimes the, the, the beauty of the prayer is in the simplicity, simplicity. and the of the child's voice. And that mm. prayer is as potent as anybody. If not more so. Until, if, more, if not more so, we feel that until because it's sincere. somebody has to come and uh, top it up or you know, and and, and because it's easy for us to get name and name and story and think, but it applies to us sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. or maybe sometimes we want to give a word to someone, and the person comes and just speaks quietly and softly and just give the word. But you know, some other times we want to really go deep and you know, ah, we are, let's let's properly do it. But I think sometimes just the simplicity of the gospel is, and, and sometimes God will do it loudly. Sometimes He will do oh, it. Oh yeah, sometimes it, it, it makes uh, when He did Elijah's own, He yeah. answered by fire. It was thunder yeah. and fire. It, but that one was was a display it, it was a display <laughs> mm, mm. yeah so god god he he does it as he wants to he does it as he he chooses to you know uh, yeah you are you're, you're right we i think we we really need to be to be careful about whether god ha is going to do something in a dramatic manner or if you see even in the way we we you know i've talked about this before where we, even prophecy when a prophecy is coming sometimes we feel if it's not dramatic enough people will not so we, we want to hey mama ha pararara iki kiki kiki ki ah and i say in tuku 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 i am the ruku 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 the lord raka 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 i change riki 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 not ah ah just i'm the lord i change not simple that's what you said which will be all the riki riki raka raka ruku ruku you know and we but we feel that if i just say i'm the lord i change not the person will feel that this thing doesn't carry weight, oh, daddy. Okay. Mm. No drama. There has to be some drama in the thing, you know. <laughs> so it can it can be a quiet. God can speak so quietly, it's still small voice, like this same when he, Elijah was running and running from Jezebel and everything. 
you know, the Bible says thunder, there was thunder, there was earthquake, the rocks buzzed. God was not in any of those. Then there was a still small voice. Yes. So sometimes we want we want the drama when there's no drama and when God has not come trapped. Pastor, I'm just tempted to tell a little short story. Please that, tell it. <laughs> um, I remember when my brother opened his house back in Nigeria. He opened his house and he called to people. There's a woman who is a family friend of ours, but a powerful woman of God. She can pray from now till tomorrow nonstop. And then my brother also invited our bishop, you know, in the village, the, the bishop in the village to come and bless the house. So the woman was meant to come earlier to do the prayer. And then the bishop will come and do the main, you know, ceremony of blessing and cutting the tape and all that. So the woman started her prayer. Her prayer was supposed to be for one hour, but obviously Nigerian style, the prayer went to about two hours, three hours. And then the bishop as well came very late. But then when he came, he came with all the entourage, all the paraphernalia and all that. And we were busy praying in the living room, the main living room. So they sent them to the second living room to sit down and wait, you know, until we finish praying. The, the woman who is a family mem, uh, family friend, she did not stop praying. So the bishop started getting a bit itchy that please go and tell them that I'm here. You know, they need to stop praying. Let them know I'm here. So mm. when we went and whispered to the... <laughs> they should when, stop praying because yeah, the bishop when is here. When we went and whispered to the woman that, ah, auntie, uh, the bishop is here now. He wants to come and take over. The woman said, tell him to come and join us. That's Let him come and join us. They went and told him, he said, no, doesn't she know that I'm here? Doesn't she know? The woman did not stop praying until about two hours later. By then, nobody was interested in any further prayer or any further ceremony. We were tired, we were hungry. People just <laughs> went about it. So, all we did was entertain the bishop and his entourage. After that, he left. <laughs> So I just have to tell that story. Just oh wow. wow! This passage just reminded me of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, I think that was the reason why the, the, the God told the prophet, "Don't take any money from him." You know, um, I I want to humble him. I want to show him to see that this is a faith transaction. Not it. It doesn't got anything to do with his power. His position is authority is money is influence or anything this is a faith transaction uh but because he went and did that and uh, and and um, you know so, it, yeah so, uh, i know i know it's 905 and um, tim apologies um is there a correlation between this story here and the one of um is this Simon the Sorcerer where he was trying to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit from Peter and Peter had to tell him that your money perish with you? Your money perish with you, yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's very similar. I think it's very similar. It has to say, it has this uh, similar tones, mm -hmm. you know, because this, this uh, the, the interesting thing is that the, the sorcerer had actually given his life to Christ. He had repented. Mm -hmm. But his mind was not renewed. Mm, mm, okay, yeah. His mind was not renewed. And that's why Peter said, Peter had to deal with that mindset. That, that, yes, the, the mindset, that carnality. Mm. And I, I love the humility that the sorcerer showed. He said, uh, pray to the Lord that these things that you have said don't happen to me. Mm. He didn't say, yeah. you know, he was very humble. He, he, he realized that, look, I, 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 my mm. mind, I'm coming from a bad place mm -hmm. and this is how I used to think. And <laughs> so I need, I need help. He didn't say, ah, how can you talk to me like that? Uh, well, I mean, ah, is it because I came to church or you, then you now think you can come and start cursing me and everything? No, no. He humbled himself too. So mm -hmm. that, 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 that was a learning point there. The power of humility. Humility will always, it will take you where nothing else can take you. Well, thank you very much, everybody. I think we've uh, we, we've we've been able to explore those two questions to some degree. Uh, unless anybody else has anything to add, uh, brother Tim, 
it's over to you. Thanks, Pastor. Thanks, everyone. Um, all too soon. After nine, nine o'clock, we've come to the end of uh, Bible study. So I hope we, we all learned one thing or the other. And uh, thank you so much, Pastor. Thanks for sending the questions. And just want to encourage people that if you have any questions, please send them in, queue them up for next week so that we can, can have another, another time like this. Um, as Pastor always reminds us, whenever we, we gather, um, please remember to, to give. You have all the all the bank details whenever we gather for for a service or for a meeting. Uh, please do remember to do that. Um, and I think that's it. It's uh, fasting and prayer, so there's still prayers every evening at seven p.m. So it'll be tomorrow and the day after. Um, and uh, look out on the WhatsApp uh, on the prayer group for um, prayer points and and prayer focus points over the next couple of days as well. Um, I think that was it. Papa, you want to send us off with a, a word of prayer, please? Yes, yes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Father, we love and bless you. Thank you for what a great God you are. Lord, we have explored some things that have raised questions. Lord, and we, we've come to the realization that we know in part and we prophesy in part. You said, but when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part will be done away with. We know that Jesus has come. We know the Holy Ghost is in us. So we, be, we pray that uh, the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened so that uh, we, will, we, we will begin to know as we are known. We will begin to... Uh, Lord, we, we thank you for the spirit of meekness and humility, the Christ-like spirit. Lord, uh, thank you that we have the mind of Christ. Thank you that, Lord, we are not, our, our, our bellies are not our God, uh, and that we don't serve mammon, but we serve Christ, the risen Christ, and his Father. Lord, so we thank you. We thank you that uh, this new thing you are doing in this season, that we will be partakers of it. We will, we, we, our eyes will be opened. We shall see and we shall know. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you. We bind and banish the spirit of Gehazi, that, that spirit of, of, of greed and avarice and lust. We banish it from our lives. And instead, we install in our hearts the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We love and bless you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks, everyone. God bless. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor.